Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So in this video, we are going to learn about bipartite graph and we are going to uh, check if a graph is bipartite or not using the DFS algorithm, which is the depth first search. Now, what is the definition of a bipartite graph? Given a graph, a graph that can be colored with exactly two colors, exactly two colors, such that no two adjacent nodes have the same color. Very, very important. You are given two colors. You need to use those two colors to color a graph such that no two adjacent nodes have the same color. Very, very important. The two colors can be anything black, white, yellow, green, or whatever. So let's take yellow and green. Now, if I take this particular graph and try to color it, so yellow, obviously, this is the adjacent node. We cannot color it with yellow because yellow and yellow will have two adjacent nodes. Thereby, we have to give it the opposite color, green. Then the next one will definitely have the opposite, yellow. Then the next one will have green. The next one will have yellow. The next one will have green, right? So if you see, all of them are opposite and none of the adjacent nodes are having the same color. Now, if we, if we go this direction, this will be given a yellow. If we go the other, this will be green. Again, this will be yellow. Now, if you see the entire graph, I took two colors, yellow and green, and I was able to color the graph in two different colors. And if you carefully see every two adjacent nodes, yes, every two adjacent nodes are having different colors. Yes, every two adjacent nodes are having different color. But if I take this particular graph, so what I can say is this graph is a bipartite graph. Yes, I can call this graph as a bipartite graph. At the same time, if I check this out, and I take the same color yellow and green. Yellow, obviously the adjacent will be opposite. Green, yellow, green, yellow, green. This is green, so this will be yellow. This is yellow, so this will be green. So if I follow this, these two adjacent nodes are having different colors. But at the same time, if you see this, uh, these two adjacent nodes are having green color. So thereby this graph cannot be colored. You can try any other possibilities. This graph cannot be colored with two colors because you will end up either having this or this same colors. Now, the reason for that is very simple because it was a even length cycle. Sorry, odd length. One, two, three, four, five. If you uh, see the length of the cycle, it was odd. So if a graph has an odd length cycle, it will never be bipartite. Remember this. If a graph has odd length cycle, then it cannot be bipartite. Apart from that, if you see this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the length of this is six. And if I see this is an even length, this is an even length, and this is a bipartite graph. Yes, and this is a bipartite graph. Similarly, any linear length graph, any linear length, like if you give something like this, then like this, then like this, then like this. This is a bipartite because you can grow like blue, green, blue, green. You can color it. So anything apart from a, like any graph which does not contain an odd length cycle are bipartite and any graph that contains an odd length cycle cannot be bipartite. A simple definition of the bipartite graph. So we will be taking this graph and the algorithm that we will be applying is DFS. Now, you know, every graph can be represented in terms of adjacency list. So this is the particular adjacency list for the graph. And we are assuming that this graph has one component. If we are able to solve it for one component, we can definitely solve it for multiple components, right? Now, in DFS algorithm, we always have a start node. So we can assume the start node to be one. You can take it to be eight. You can take it to be four, whichever you wish to. And we always have a visited matrix, uh, sorry, visited array. But over here, what we will do is we will take a color array and of the same size of the number of nodes and we will make sure everyone is initially colored with minus one, which means none of the nodes are colored and the colors that we will use to color the nodes are zero and one. These can be like yellow and green. So zero and one. So this is the graph. So initially what you do is you call the DFS function. Yes. Initially you call the DFS function from one, right? And the moment you call it from one, just to make sure like you can just have it something like this. You can pass the color that you want to color it with You can pass the color zero. So DFS of one zero. So the, so the moment the call comes in for DFS of one, 
and the color 0. It goes to the position 1 and says, can you color it with a color 0? And he's like, yeah, fine, I can color it with a color 0. So we have done it. And now what we will see is, who are the adjacent nodes of 1? And we see that there is only 1. So what do you do is, you call it for 2. Yes, you call it for 2. Now, is 2 colored? 2 is not colored, so you call it for 2. And which color will you give 2? It will obviously give the opposite color to what was of 0. So you'll give it the opposite color, which is 1. So give it the opposite color, that is 1. So as of now, you'll go to 2. So you'll have a color 1. So let's color it with 1. Now you go to 2. And who are the adjacent nodes? The first adjacent node is 1. And you see that it is already colored with a color 0, right? And this was colored with color 1. So it's an adjacent node and it is colored with a different color. So that is okay. It is already colored with a different color. So I will not go there. And the next is 3. So I see the next is 3. So what I'll do is I will go to 3 and I'll give it the opposite color. And what is the opposite color? 0. So now you go to 3 and you say the color is 0 and have it a color 0. Perfect. So the DFS call for 3 comes in and the first node that it sees is 2. So 3 sees that the first adjacent node is 2. And it checks that, okay, my color is 0 and the adjacent color is 1. So it is perfect. But it is already colored. So I will not go and visit it. Perfect. Next, we have a 4. And we see that it is not colored. So what we will do is, we will have a DFS call for 4 with the opposite color, which is 1. So 4 will be colored with 1 now. Perfect. Next, we have a DFS 4. And DFS 4 has a 3. DFS 4 has a 3. And the 4 has a color 1 and the 3 has a color 0. So it has an opposite color, but it has been already colored. So I will not go here. The next adjacent node is 5 and the next is 7. So probably uh, let's go for 7 first and then we can go for 5. Just to uh, have a better understanding of the DFS algo. I'll just change it over here. We'll have 7 first and then 5. So the next node is 7. So what I will do is I will now go to DFS of 7 with a color 0 and when I come back then I'll go to the DFS of 5 with a color 0 because this is color 1 so we'll go to color 0 this is color 1 so we'll go to color 0 so DFS of 4 says I'll go to 7 with a color 0 so it's like fine go to 7 with a color 0 right and now 7 says I have 4 which is already colored and I have 8 which is not colored so please go to 8 and color it with the opposite color so DFS of 8 with a color 1 so 8 goes and colors that with color 1. By the way, just make sure you make mark the colors. Perfect. Now 8 says, I just have one guy 7. 8 says, I just have one guy 7. And that guy is already colored with 0, which is my opposite color. So that's okay. So 8 says, I do not have any further notes. 8 says, I do not have any further notes. So what 8 does is, 8 says, fine. From my end, I do not have any problem. I came up to 8. And I did not find any problem to color the graph with only two colors. I had absolutely no problem. So please go back. So it will go back. Seven says, okay, fine. My job is done because I don't have any further adjacent nodes. Go back. Now four says, I had a call for seven, which is over. And they did not find any problem. So I will now go for five. Perfect. Now I will go for five. So you realize there was one node which got completed. Then you do the DFS for five. Now we will go for five. So what will happen is you'll go to five and you'll have a color zero. So five says, okay, I have a color zero. Perfect. Now, when you come to five, five has the adjacent node as four, which is already colored with color one. That's perfect. Opposite color. And a five has a six. So we will go to six now. Let's go to six. So we will go to six with the opposite color of one. So we go and mark it as one. We mark this as one. Perfect. Now we are at six. So 6 says, my first adjacent node is 2. Very important. 6 says, my first adjacent node is 2. And I see, it's already colored. But dude, wait. It has been colored with the same color. It has been colored with the same color. I got an adjacent node. I got an adjacent node with the same color. That means it is a bipartite. Yes. Sorry, that means it is not a bipartite. It cannot be colored. So 6 says, hey, when I was checking for 2, when I was checking for 2, it has the same color as I do have. So, it is not a bipartite. So he says, hey, can you please return false? So this DFS says, I called for 6, 
that guy is saying me, I cannot be bipartite. So I also cannot be bipartite. So he returns a false. Now the four says, I call DFS of five and that guy says he cannot be bipartite. So I'll be like, I also cannot be bipartite. Now three says I called four, so I cannot be bipartite. Two says I called three, so I cannot be bipartite. One says I called two and he says false, so I say false. So everyone says false. So ultimately you get the reason or you get the validation as false that this is not a bipartite. I hope that makes sense. Now, if you would have done a normal DFS where you would have, let's say take this graph, super simple. So what would have happened was you'd have gone DFS of one color zero, and then you would have gone DFS of two color one. Then you would have gone for DFS of three color zero. And then there was no other notes. So apparently this guy would have returned true. And this guy would have said, I did not find false. So return true. This guy would have said, I did not find false. So return true. So apparently you would have got true. So unless and until, very important, unless and until you uh, don't get a false, do not return a false. If you're getting a false, which means the adjacent node color should be equal to this guy's color, this guy's color, right? That is what you need to do. So now what I will do is I'll super quickly code this up. So it's time to code it up. C++ code on the right and the Java code on the left. So we're given V and we're given adjacency list. So what we wrote was for a single, like the logic that we debugged was for a single component. So we are going to write this for multiple components. Okay. Perfect. Next, please run a loop and make sure everyone, yes, everyone is marked as something as minus one. Perfect. Done. Now what is the next thing that you'll do? You'll run it for components. So you know how to run it for components, connected components, number of provinces question. If you haven't seen it, please go back and check it out. So visited of, sorry, it's instead of visited, this time we'll say color of i equal to minus one, right? And what we will do is we will call the DFS and we will ask the DFS, Hey, this is I start with color zero, take the color array and take the adjacency. Okay. And if you return a false, then I can say it's not a bipartite. If you return a false, if this DFS, I said you, if any of the DFS returns a false, it cannot be a bipartite. If none of them do, it's a true. Perfect. Done. Now we just need to write the BFS, which is kind of simple. We just need to write Boolean DFS, int node, int color, which color is it carrying and the vector of adjacency. Perfect. Now what we will do, we'll always color the node with the given color. So please do it. Now we know these are the adjacency nodes. So go and run it for the adjacency nodes. Now you check, is this previously not colored? If this is previously not colored, you say, okay, please go and color it with the opposite color of the color that I have. But if this is previously colored, this adjacent node is previously colored. Very, very important. If this adjacent node is previously colored and is having the same color as I have, or you can say call, if it is, if it is, then I say it cannot be a bipartite. Or if you have Travis for all the adjacent nodes and you never found out any false, you get a true. So this is a DFS call. As I said, if any of the DFS calls return a false, because this call might return a false, might, then you say cannot be a hypertype. If this DFS call returns a false, don't need to check for any other nodes. You cannot color it. So this is how you can easily write it. So what I'll do is I'll now quickly compile this up. So now let's discuss the time complexity and the space complexity. Which algorithm are we using? We're using a simple DFS algorithm. Assuming that the graph uh, is bipartite and you can color it, then it's a simple traversal algorithm. So the time complexity and the space complexity will be similar to what we used in DFS algorithm, which is B go of V plus two E, which is the time complexity and the space that we are using is a color array, which is B go of V. So guys, I hope I was able to explain you this particular problem. So just in case I was, please, please hit that like button. And if you're new to our channel, what are you waiting for? I think you should hit that subscribe button right away. And if you haven't checked out our DP series and the SD sheet, the links are in the description. Please make sure you check it out. And with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.